Hello and welcome to Marshfield High, where tonight your Brockton boxers take the trip down Route 3 to take on the Marshfield Rams. It's the non-playoff bracket in the MIAA's regular season, I guess you could call it. It's a rainy one. It's wet. It's going to be gritty. It's going to come down to the two quarterbacks, Jose Montero Jr. for the boxers and Jackson Finney for the Rams. It's senior night. The Rams want to put on a good show. The boxers want to bounce back from that loss against the Needham Rockets. It's the Rams and the boxers coming up on Brockton Community Access. Green. Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt. Blue shirt. Yellow shirt. Oops. <laughs> Yellow pants. Red pants. Green pants. Oops. <laughs> Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. You, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome into Marshfield High where tonight the Brockton Boxers travel down Route 3 to face off against the Marshfield Rams. Both of these teams eliminated in the South Sectional Playoff Tournament last week, and now we enter the Bridesmaids Bracket. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partners, Alex Wish and the Brockton Athletic Director, Kevin Caro. Alex, we'll start off with you. Brockton, a sloppy game against Needham last week, but it came down to overtime. A missed extra point ended up being the difference in that one. Yeah, um, I, w I was watching that game, and all you know, all game long, you know, I was saying how lucky the Brockton Boxers were to still be in that game at halftime. You know, at halftime they they were down by um, they were down by seven, right? At halftime, you know, but in the first half it was so many mistakes and. You know, at halftime, I was like, they are so lucky to be back in this game. And, you know, in the second half, I had that feeling that they were going to go up 21-20. to And that missed field goal really cost them and everything. So that that was tough to watch, very tough to watch and beat them. Well, so you, you talk about football legacies, a couple of names come to mind. Everett's coach. Brockton's uh, now assistant coach, Armin Colombo, and Marshfield's coach, Lou Silva. Coach Silva, in his final regular season here at Marshfield High, this is his final home game. 37 years at the helm, it's got to be quite easy to motivate the Rams for tonight's matchup. 
Yeah, that, that will be the motivating factor. His final home game here uh, amongst the Marshfield crowd. It should be interesting to watch. Um, you know, even though this is, you know, the loser's bracket. You know, the Marshfield team will start, try to give him one last real good effort here at home. Well, the Marshfield Marching Band is going to bring us the National Anthem, and then it's the Rams and the Boxers on BCA Sports. For the Boston, Mr. Peter Colombo, the head coach for your Rams, Mr. Lou Silva. Tonight's officials, the referee, Mr. Joseph Bullis, the umpire, Mr. James Bowman, line judge, Mr. Edward Williams, headlines, Mr. Richard Anderson, back judge, Bobby Peel, and up here on the clock, Mr. Larry Keogh. Scattered showers is going to be the call tonight. Marshfield wearing their home green jerseys, black pants, with a big white M on the side of the helmets. Mr. Caro, it's going to be a gritty one here tonight. Oh, 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 Kicking off of the box is Max Tobin. Max D for the Rams. Number 14, Dana Hickey. Number 25, Brandon Moore. Rob by Leslie on the return. It was going to be illegal formation. There were only five guys on the line of scrimmage. Rule says you have to have seven. Through the flag, they picked it up after the conference of officials. We've been told a written apology from the officiating crew for picking up that flag. And essentially, you can't put it all on one play, but here's Marshfield's running back going... All the way down to Jack the 20 McNeil yard line. Takes it deep in that the was territory. Jack McNeil. Now to the 17 like yard line. I said earlier, I said I'd rather that they didn't say anything. Because at this point, I mean, there's nothing you can do. We can't protest the game. Um, just let it go. Because that, maybe it makes the officials feel better. Um, but for the kids and for the coaching staff. It, yep, thanks. This is a oh, pitch out. It's going to be incomplete, but it's going to be a fumble as it traveled backwards. Yes, that's a fumble. We're going to have another conference of officials early on Can't in this game. Yeah, a that's going to be a Brockton fumble recovery. Picked up by the Brock. Well, we've got to keep things interesting. This is the first of a few matchups against the Rams this weekend yeah, in, in various in sports. Hours. Number one seeded boys soccer team at home tomorrow night against the Rams at Marciano Stadium. Mm -hmm. Should be a great matchup. I think it's 
being a little bit underhyped, Marshfield always a great, really athletic program, soccer and football in general, uh, in particular. But the boys, uh, the boxers, number one seed, yeah. one loss on the year, which is tough. Last but you'd rather it come yeah. in the regular season than in the playoffs. And I even told the, told the coach that I think that it, it's a good thing in a lot of ways. And you've got to build positive because they were getting a little, they were getting a little full of themselves. And um, they, the Rosie reality Pierre on the option to the outside. And they were out working hard the past couple of days. They had a good practice over at the stadium today. So I think they're ready to go. And they know the, what they need to do. But I was at the game on uh, Tuesday night. Pick up the they first down. Like 5 1. Flag on the play. New Bedford pulled some stuff out a couple times. Defenders slid. Goes against the Rams. Late right hit. On the end line. Somebody headed one out of the net. And that was early on in the game. And you could just see the momentum shift the second half. Oh, but they're a good team. A late hit on the rims oh. for pushing Rosenpier after he was already out of bounds. 15 yards and a free first down for the boxers. Montero Jr. on the keeper. He's going to cut back inside, go back the other way. Throws a stiff arm, and now he turns the corner on the far sideline. And he has a pickup of about eight and a half, maybe nine yards. It'll be second and one for Rockton. Jr. On the keeper. So just you here tonight with me. Gain of nine. For the time being. Party of two. For for the time being, good friend Alex Wish is coming down. And that's when I get at kicked some out. point. Now we have a third headset. Okay. I'm not a big fan of standing up in the rain. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> me neither. Poor uh, poor Mike the Postman Simmons is upstairs. Is Rosen Pierre. Has a first down and a few insurance yards. Pierre on the like carry. Picks up the game. first down. That was that was an ugly one. That was probably the second worst weather I've ever been to a football game. In. First, no doubt, BC High Morsi Boulevard. And and for the record, I did try postponing that game, but I waited too long. And CM was on the bus. And then the next day was like 70 and sunny. Thanks for reminding me. Montero Jr. in the gun is a okay. little pitch forward to Dexter Cumberlander. And that goes for a game of maybe about one. On the carry. So it's been an interesting season for the boxers. Started off against Lexington in week one. I don't think anybody was corralling that quarterback. Nobody has all season. And the shame is he's going to, uh, I think BC on a baseball scholarship is, here's Pierre. Oh, somebody said it was last week. Rosen up the middle. He ran for 250 yards in the first Three half. Seven. Down. Which is ridiculous. Absolutely, that's inhuman. So it is a third and about three for the boxers as we're now joined by the wishbone himself, Alex Wish. That's not gonna get it done. They gotta go for it. Montero. No gain on the play. Fourth down in three. So it'll be fourth and about three for the boxers. And then week two, we came back against Weymouth, 27 yeah. to uh, ten. Seven, uh, 10, I think was the final score of that game. Mm -hmm. And then we go on that vaunted Catholic the Conference the swing. Boxes. We almost pulled out the win against CM in that rainy, yeah, wet, wild one. Should have, could have, didn't. And then we traveled up to Cambridge in one of the more picturesque games yeah. at Harvard <laughs> Stadium. Great setting. Great setting. We had the Boston skyline all lit up. And then we traveled to Severian, which Needham has the honor and privilege of hosting. 
this week, but it, it seems like it seems like every year in the MIAA semifinals, it comes down to three Catholic Conference teams, mm -hmm. the three that we play in the regular season, yep. and then some poor sucker that wins in the first round. Mm -hmm. And that sucker happens to be Needham this year. Yep. And last year it was us that had to go last to Last year it was High. us at VC High, right? Fourth down and three. So it's fourth and three. Brockton lined up to go for it. Yeah, they have to go for it. They're in that gray in area ride. within the 40-yard line where it's a little bit too long to, uh, too short oh. to punt. And Brockton's going to jump. And that's... False start. It's going to be false start against the boxers. It'll bring up a fourth and eight. Alex, you were with us in Needham last week. Penalties ended up being a killer in that game. Uh, yeah, it was just painful to watch uh, some of the plays actually happen. And, you know, they had their chances in that game. And, you know, they were lucky to actually even come back because – a lot of penalties cost them. I was watching from, I was actually up in the booth with you, but I was, you know, as a spectator. And that's, you know, unfortunate to see. They could have beat Needham, from my opinion. Montero Jr. back to pass, looking, he's got a man. It's gonna be broken up, intended for Tejon Darty glenn Montero It's gonna fall incomplete, and a turnover on downs for the boxers. Good defend. Tip Matheson on the break up. First Tim Matheson the on the breakup for the boxer, uh, for the Rams, excuse me. 7.28 to go, and it's a first and 10 for the Rams. Brockton winning the toss, electing to defer, so Marshfield has already had their first possession. The guy to watch is Jackson Finney, the six foot, 191 pound quarterback. He's a, one of those dual threat guys that can Turn on the legs, and he's going to do it right off the bat here. And be run out of bounds. Brendan Ward to the outside. Seems to be the way that at least high school football is going. Dual threat quarterbacks can both run and throw the ball. It was a trend in the NFL for a little bit. Until everybody started getting banged up. Until every <laughs> Deshaun Watson, one of the best in the game oh, right now. Out for the year, I saw Torn that today ACL. in practice. Another moment of silence for Mike Simmons' fantasy team. <laughs> Had him on the bench last oh, week. He was fun to watch, too. Points. It's been a wacky year as far as injuries go across high school, the pros. Look out, look Finney out. Finney is under pressure. He's going to throw across his body. Nope, that's incomplete. And it's going to fall incomplete. No, did the Patriots pick up a backup? Jackson Finney, yeah. pass. Brian Hoyer signed Brandon for three Hoyer. years. He's back. He's back. I was very skeptical. You never know what can happen in a day of practice, as we've just learned with Houston. Mm -hmm. Only one quarterback on the roster after they traded Garoppolo to... San Francisco. Yeah, you. That was your concern the other day when you were talking to me. Said, it's only, you never know what can Tom happen. Brady and he's, you know, forty. Uh, see, this is what scares me. This one taken by Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, cutting up field. He slips down at the 24-yard line. Anytime the ball is punted or kicked off, I hold my breath. Especially in the rain. Especially in the rain. 6.17 to go, and we have the second possession of the night for Brockton. Similar starting field position for the boxers. So maybe we'll see Jose Montero Jr. air it out a little bit. A couple of big threats at receiver for the boxers. Yeah, with Tayshawn. Tayshawn, I think he's got his wrist quite isn't right. This up, I know we had injured it earlier in the year. There goes Rosie. Go Rosie. Give to Pierre, and he's got a hole in some room to run. He's got a first down and more all the way up to the 47-yard line for Rosen Pierre and the Brockton boxers. Takes it up to the 40. Seven yard line. Well, going 
going back to the final regular season game at New Bedford, another one of those sloppy, gritty, last man standing games. It was a, it was an even mix of yeah. passing and running. Rosenpier and Ellerby Cundiff, each with a couple touchdowns, and Dexter Cumberlander with the game winning touchdown in that one. Uh, this one's going to fall incomplete, intended for Tejon Glenn. Pass Talk about Glenn, multiple sport athletes Pass all the time, down. one of my favorite topics. On the starting offense, the starting 11, there's two or three that are on the basketball team. Tayshawn's on the basketball team. I think Junior's going to be out on the basketball team if his knee holds up. Um, Sonny is on the basketball team. And a lot of them went, run winter track. Montero Jr., high snap. He pitches out to Pierre, and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a Those third and ten the for the boxers. Loss of one. Third and 11. So it's going to be a third and 11 after the spot of a loss of about one. Not too much success on offense. Alex, as we are driving down... Route three, we saw the clouds. We thought it might rain. The forecast calling for scattered showers. We've already seen one of those showers. It's starting to pick up again here tonight. Uh, it's raining on Route oh. three on my way here. Montero Jr. escaping the hit, and he's going to throw it long. And it's going to fall incomplete, almost picked off. Weather Montero definitely a factor early in this one. Get the Doppler That's radar going. Looks like scattered showers, but when it hits, Mr. Cairo, it's going to hit. Yeah, I think that's it. Nope. McNeil and Ward back feet. Oh, a high punt. Falling at the 22, taken by McNeely. McNeely cutting up field, and he gets to the 39-yard line before being brought down by a host of boxers. Four and a half minutes to go. It's been a very slow start for both of these teams on the offensive side of the football. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Busy week for BCA Sports dual threat action tonight as Aaron Tebow is in Franklin. Oh, he is, he is out there watching the We cover game. everything. Cover everything. That game happening simultaneously with this one as the big man Eddie Keelty fighting ahead for a gain of about five. Tomorrow night, the Rams come to Marciano Stadium to face off against the Top ranked in the state and number one seeded in the South Section boys soccer team. If the girls win in Franklin tonight, we travel down to Hingham on Sunday night as this pass is complete to Dan Hickey. That would be a nice easy commute. Yeah, it would. It would. Good for Ram first down. Excellent restaurants down in Hingham. Good scene. You mean up in Hingham? Up in Hingham. up in Hingham. Yeah. Over. Over. Over in Hingham. Up and over. Up and over. <laughs> over and out. As taken down in the backfield was McNeil. Jack McNeil. And that'll go for a loss of a yard and a half. So the girls, if they win tonight against Franklin, play at Hingham on Sunday night. If the boys win tomorrow night at home against Marshfield, they will play at home on Monday night. Against who? We don't know. The winner of King Philip and Natick, I think. McNeil again. Like right down, at the tip of his finger. It's pretty impressive here. King Philip and Natick, the eight and nine seeds going at it tomorrow night. 
This pass complete over oh, the middle, football. and it's out. And who's got it still loose? And, and, instead, of fall, instead of falling on it, we tried picking it up. So recovered for a long first down. Recovered by Jack McNeil. Jack McNeil, I think who initially fumbled the ball. Falling on it, first and 10 for the Rams. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Stuffed Brendan at the Wood line the was Brendan Wood. That was by Paul Mitchell. It's a good tackle that he came up on. Paul Mitchell, one of the names we've heard increasingly often yeah. this season, both on offense and That's defense. Yeah, they just put him back in, in the uh, secondary not that long ago. Oh, pitch out is going to be loose, and they're going to call incomplete pass. Pass intended for Jack McNeil. Intended for Jack McNeil. Didn't even touch that ball. Went right through his hands. A lot of whistles. We got a time on, time out on the field. But look at this bracket, though. Full this time is out. really Ball by the Rams. stacked. Stacked. Yeah. At the top, as they should be, 15 1 and 2 Graphical is Brockton. The right under them is oh, Wellesley at 13 2 and, and 1. Just taking a look at this, I mean, we've played BC High in the season, Zavarian in the season, Durfee, Braintree, Mansfield. New Bedford, Brock, and so, I mean. We've okay. beaten a number of the teams already. Mm -hmm. Touchdown club does have merchandise outside the and east. And then on the girls' goal, side. Under the white tent. We won't get too deep into it, but Brockton, the 19th seed. Hey. Three, 13 and two yep. on the year. Winning the division, or share of the division. Coach. Getting into the playoffs. Nothing wrong with that. No. Everybody starts 0-0 in the playoffs. playoffs. And, and Coach Glennon was feeling good. They had a good practice yesterday. and Anything can happen come tournament time. Of course, just last year we saw the boxers go down to Plymouth oh. South. Yeah, the girls. And defeat the Panthers in a preliminary round game. McNeil on the carry again, trying to get to the outside, is brought down after a short gain. Fourth and we'll call it eight. Brings up fourth down for the Rams. Hey, they got to go for it. Oh, they did a nice job with this new high school in here. Beautiful. Oh, they, they really and, did a and, great job. An excellent campus, a couple of football fields. As that this should be out of play. fly is going to fall incomplete so that's out of play. Over on downs. It doesn't even look like the play was set. Well, we do have a flag on the play. Offsides. It's going to be offsides. Offside so we'll have a oh. redo. Yeah, It'll be fourth down. and three. Marshfield setting up to go for it. Just last it. week against Needham, oh, we saw we saw an excellent field goal kicker for the Rockets. Oh, he was good. A couple of field goals, a couple of extra points for Alex Sliney. As this one is complete. Yeah. And enough for Brendan Ward. And that's going to be enough for a Marshfield first down. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. First and goal for the Rams. And it'll be fourth, uh, first, excuse me, and goal for the Marshfield Rams. Yeah, that, that kid from Needham made that, what was it, 47-yarder? They tried. It did. He attempted a 47-yarder as Marshfield driving close to the end zone. And it's going to be Mark just shy. Just imagine we made that sign up for the one NFL. Yard line. Oh yeah. Sign him up for the Patriots. <laughs> he had a better percentage in that one game than Nick Folk has had all year for the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. So it's second and goal from the one for 
Marshfield a minute to go in the first quarter. Quarterback keeper, and he's in. And he's in. It's Jackson Finney. And so it is six to nothing. Rams on top of the boxers almost at the end of the first quarter. A little bit slower than expected, but Marshfield's offense has started to click, at least on the last drive. Uh, but that's Helped just out sloppy. by a few penalties. Fourth and fourth and eight. We jump off sides. Not this, not this point in the season. That shouldn't happen. Early on, yes, you got to be disciplined. You got to stay focused, and that's that's just a mental mistake. We've had two of them already tonight. Of course, the everlasting battle in this wonderful note the uh, the sarcasm in that word is that's your Marshfield second, going for two. That's your second language, isn't it? Absolutely, you're, you're and the sarcasm. Finney, two point conversion for Jackson Finney is good. So it's 8 nothing, Marshfield on top of Brockton. But yeah, the everlasting battle in this wonderful, note the sarcasm, new playoff format for the MIAA. This very convoluted scheme where nobody knows what's going on. This game ultimately means nothing. Absolutely nothing except for pride. Yep. Yeah, the these, are, made pride. these are high school kids. It's very tough to motivate a high school kid anyway. No, it's, it's tough to motivate anybody. I mean, it's just like an NFL team or that knows at the end of the season that they're playing for jobs, but ultimately, what's to play for? I mean, if you're out of anything, it's just tough. Fan, fan base, what do we have? 12 people that came over. <laughs> well, for, the, for, these, for these guys, for Brockton and for Marshfield, you know, for next year, they should be uh, should be Ellery, looking at Ellery what to Cundiff do, develop. And, uh, Rosen Pierre. Coach Colombo getting a good idea of who's going to have next year, what they're capable of. Yeah, and I think that you'll see that probably more next Please week. We'll maybe you'll get some, see some kids return. that are sophomores and juniors maybe get some time Please depending on who we're playing. 25. But, I mean, ultimately, you want to win. I mean, you, do, you want to win and, you know, keep the mojo going. Well, it's an interesting situation it on the tough. other sideline for Marshfield tonight. Head coach Lou Silva's last season yep. down here at Marshfield. He's been here for what, something really like 34 years. Mm -hmm. His last season. I'm sure it's not as difficult to motivate the yeah. Rams as it is on the other sideline. 37 years to be exact. 37 years. Oh, and what do we got? Movement. Flags thrown, movement that's, on both sides. But that's false start again. That's false just start against the boxers. boxers. You know, if you're a player, you just got to think of this as a exhibition game. Exhibition games, you know, obviously don't mean anything, but... Uh -oh, it's a junior. chance to develop, a chance uh -oh. to get some more experiences. Montero is taken down for a loss in the play. Montero on the quarterback keeper evaded a few tackles and then ultimately got taken down behind the line. It'll be a second and about 20. 20 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Is Montero a senior? Okay. Jose Montero Jr. missing greater part of the last two seasons with injuries. Of course, a torn ACL in training camp last spring. Now, would you think they tried something at, uh, quarterback? They've had a little bit of a rotating door in Montero's absence. Thomas O'Brien. Yeah, Tommy gets in and gets some reps. Stepping up, of course, last year was Matthew Caruso. Mm -hmm. And Caruso broke his collarbone in the first round playoff game against Newton North. O'Brien stepped up in that one, and, and Matty, Matt was. It's going to be very difficult to go into BC High and take down the Eagles for any quarterback, yeah. let alone someone who's coming in to start. I think their second no, I game of the season. I think that with Matt
Matt at the quarterback, and it's not to take anything away from Tommy or anybody else who was backing up. I honestly thought that Matt Pound for Pound was the best all-around athlete in the high school last year. Really, I mean, he was, he could do anything. Now he's up at Bryant. Yep, he's up at Bryant, doing very well up there. I wanted him to play baseball in the worst way. I did, I wanted him to pitch. And he was hell-bent on throwing the javelin, which is good for him, but I honestly think he could have been even more of a prospect as a baseball player than he was a football player. Which is a scary thought. I mean, we saw it with Lexington's quarterback in week one. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to get a full scholarship for baseball, Around, be, especially, local, especially being BC, kid. being a local kid. And to do what he did against Brockton, I mean... He must have run for 250 and had oh, at least another 300 through the air. One man wrecking crew. Oh, oh Junior. Well, Terra goes down, but he pitches it up before he was brought down. Rosen Pierre charging ahead. Rosen Pierre has a hole, and he's all the way across the 50. Well, They're going to spot him at the 50 yard line. Nope, nobody's going to call it back. I'm surprised. Making something <laughs> from nothing. And we got no replays here, so. Can't look if he was down or not. Yeah, we don't have replay tonight, Matt. What's going on? No man? replay. No, no the truck. the one man wrecking crew upstairs, Mike the Postman Simmons. Can't do it all, so he's only on camera tonight. So it's a first and ten at the 50 yard line for the boxers. The lone wide out, and the pitch goes to Rosen Pierre. Pierre. Turning the corner on the far sideline, he's got a first down, and he's dragged down after a gain of about 14. And Brockton's offense has started to come alive early in this second quarter. And this is the thing, you can't have a, a momentum killer with a stupid offside or a movement penalty. That's why I think, oh boy. Or, Balls out, Pierre or, falling on it. Or a fumble. Fumble on the play, covered by Rosen. Oh, I like what Junior's doing. He's just going up, snapping the ball. He's not doing a two count or anything. He's just getting up, getting rid of it. So it's going to be a second and about 11 for the boxers. give to Dexter Cumberlander. Of course, Cumberlander, Cumberlander one of the senior co-captains of this boxer team. Rejoining us from the dark side. Playing at Severian last year. Yeah. Having a phenomenal year for the boxers. Full back and also as a, he's a kind of middle linebacker. Timeout called by the boxers. 8.52 to go in the second quarter. Marshfield on top, 8-0 over the Brockton boxers in Brockton's first game of what I affectionately refer to as the bridesmaids bracket. <laughs> they will play next week sometime, somewhere against someone. That's about all we know. We'll be at home, that I can guarantee you. We'll be at home. Thursday night, uh, hopefully, hopefully Thursday. That's the plan to do a 6 o'clock Thursday game, depending on what soccer's going. I think soccer's Wednesday with the semis, south sectional semis would be on Wednesday. And I'm hoping football Thursday and then Veterans Day, hopefully nothing on Friday. So, as the insider with all the information, how does that work? How, how is it determined that we're going to be home next week? We have to get we're guaranteed one home game over the course of the playoffs. So, last week we were on the road. This week we're on the road. So, that one game would be in Brocker. Montero Jr. under center. 
They give to number 27, who has a first down. Ed Ferreira. That is Ed Ferreira, the sophomore back. He's to the outside, picks up the box of first He's down. He's got a first down, 8.45 to go in the second quarter. And the boxers drawing closer to the end zone. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. Same play, it's Ferreira right up the gut. And this time he's got a gain of Ferreira about eight. Gain of seven. Officially a gain of seven, second and three for the boxers. I formation, the old school formation well, for the boxers. Be, that should be offsides. The play not developing well, and Montero Jr. cutting to the outside. Montero. I think he's. Right, got about back. a yard. Any flag? No, I don't think I see a flag anywhere. No, I saw a little movement. Yeah, I saw movement. Not on us. <laughs> so in all likelihood, next year it'll be good now junior Michael Norman Jr. stepping in. Yes, at I, quarterback. I would. I would there it is again. Oh. And that should be that should be an additional oh, well yeah. it'll be half the distance, but that should be an but additional that, unnecessary that, roughness. And that was the same side that we saw movement on last time. It should be unnecessary as well as a neutral zone infraction. I'll push him. Oh, somebody screaming, come on left. <laughs> Half distance to the goal. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna let the unnecessary roughness go. It'll be first and goal from the four yard line for just Brockton. Move them up. Half distance to the goal. What do we got? Timeout called by Marshfield. And Michael Norman. We've seen him a few times in the last couple of years at quarterback for the Boxers. And, and the thing with Mike, I know it's it's frustrating for him because he goes to practice every day. He works hard. And it's just one of the numbers things. So he's, the junior's their starter. Um, Mike can definitely step in. I've seen him play at the JV level. He's done all the right things. He'll get his opportunity, and I think he'll make the most of it when his number's called. And He's a great kid. I've known him since he was a sixth grader over at South with me. They give to Pierre. He's got a hole reaching for the end zone. And he's in for a boxer touchdown. Touchdown for the boxer. All right, we'll take it. Now will they go for two? I think you have to. Ed Ferreira on the carry. On the other end of the spectrum, Brockton has a very good place kicker. Max Tobob has been good for the boxers so far this year. I just going back to the kid from Needham. I guarantee you, we have at least three or four kids. There was somebody out at gym class the other day, no lie, kicking 40 yarders without a tee. Wow! Cut from cut from the soccer team, and the kids came in and go, "Mr. Carey, you got to see this kid. He's out kicking 40 yarders." Ontario Junior under center for the two-point attempt. His pass is going to ping pong around and be caught. I think that was Oak and Lola in the back of the end zone. All right. And we're all tied up at eight. Just like that. Just the, the one kick that really stands out last week against Needham was that 47 yard attempt for Alex Liney. It came up just short. One of the boxers got their hands on it at the line, but if that didn't happen, it was accurate. And it was only a few yards shy. Yeah, it just fell short of the goal post. Maybe it maybe fell short by a few yards, but I mean, it, it was on point. 
wasn't like way off to the left or way off to the right. But well, we've, we've seen a few good kickers this year. I mean, the kid that was at, um, oh, little squibber. I mean, the kid from BC High, I remember bombing him into the, over the net at Harvard Stadium. He was, he was good. Seven thirty-five to go in the first half. We're all knotted up, eight apiece. First down from the forty-one. Guilty on the carry. The senior linebacker. And this one is the senior quarterback, Jackson Finney, on the carry. five on the play. Pass over the middle is caught. And number 24. Number 24, Casey Finney on the reception. First down for the Rams. That was Casey Finney, the sophomore on the reception. That's the quarterback, Jackson, fitting on the carry. Has a gain of about five. So, Alex, after a slow start for both teams, a turnover and a couple of three and outs for either side. Seen a little uptick in the action. Picks up. All right, yeah, you see Marshfield uh, pick up the pace a little bit, you know, even though this is the bridesmaid's bracket, as you say. Marshfield still wants to show these guys from Brockton that, hey, you know, we can compete with you. We, we're going to march downfield, and we're going to show your defense that, you know, we're quite capable. You know, I thought it was last weekend. No, you definitely can not. tell about okay. the uh, the defense as compared from last week to this week. As I'm watching this game and comparing it to last week, and the intensity in last week's game as compared to the defense here. The defense last week was on top of everything, pretty much, um, besides a few mistakes few um, that one that went for 87 yards and they wired all the way back besides that the defense was on top of their game last week here it's like you know this very sort lackadaisical of, yeah right found the word for it Finney splitting out to the near side stopping popping wobbly pass uh, is almost uh, picked off caught. That was Paul yeah, Mitchell the in the area. Flag, Flag in the backfield. Flag thrown from the secondary of the boxers. It looks like it's going to be on the boxers. Looks like it's going to be a hold. The ref's talking through it. There's going to be a hold against the boxers. Yeah, they're going to move them up.
5.42 left in the first half. All knotted up at eight. Marshfield threatening again with a free first down. At the 20 yard line. Ball spotted at the 16 yard line. Three receivers set, two to the near side for the Rams. Finney, quick screen pass complete to number 44, who gets to about the nine yard line. Rob Violesi, the 5'11 running back. Second and about five from the 10. Finney spinning with it, giving it off to McNeil right up the gut. Still up. Wow. Took about five Brockton boxes to bring him down. Wow. It'll be third and about three. The Rams drawing closer. Finney in the shotgun looking to pass, and he's got a wide open. A wide open. Casey Finney in the end zone. No Brockton boxer in the area for that one. And the Rams now lead 14 to 8 with 4.44 to go in the second quarter. Conversion attempt is no good. So we remain 14 to 8. Brockton trailing by 6. Most likely going to bleed most of the remaining 4 and 3 quarter minutes in the second quarter. They do receive the opening kickoff to the second half. Deep Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Rosen Pierre. 90 yard return right here. Paul Mitchell. All back deep for the boxers. 70 80 yard return right here. Let's We've see seen crazier things Let's this year. I can see it happening. End over end low kick bouncing on the wet turf picked up by Ellerby Cundiff. Ellerby Cundiff. Splitting to the far side, turning the corner. He's got a decent return to about the 35 before being pushed out of bounds. They like going to that outside. As of late, you know, that's where they've been successful on the punt return or a field goal on a field goal return. return. First down from the 33-yard line. One of the more athletic feats we've seen tonight, the entire cheerleading squad doing a line of backflips. I, I can't see this booth. There's a lot of blind spots. <laughs> eye formation, the power eye for the boxers. Rosen Pierre right up the gut. And he has a gain of about eight. Most memorable backflip of all time. Has to go to Mike the Postman Simmons. Really? If you want the story, DM us on Twitter, at Brockton Channel, hashtag BCA Sports, and maybe Mike will tell you the story. Maybe he'll tell me after the game. Maybe. Maybe. For the viewing public, 
on Twitter at Brockton Channel. Hashtag BCA Sports. Pitch out to Rosen Pierre. Pierre getting to the far side, turning the corner. He's got a first down and about four additional yards. As the boxers have plenty of time, 352 left in the first half. First and ten for the boxers. Power eye. Montero Jr. under center. Back to pass. Looking long towards the near side. He's got a wide open. open. Wide open. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Wow. That's a 55-yard touchdown pass for Jose Montero Jr. to Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Count it. We're all tied up at 14. There's two things that Jose Montero Jr. is good at. One is the quarterback carry, quarterback keeper, and the deep pass. He is stellar at the deep pass. Every game I've been to, every deep there's, pass there's he's been got, at least one. He, he, he must have a great percentage on that deep pass. It, it, it must be a pretty decent percentage. Extra point is good. Boxers have a one-point edge. 15 to 14. Of course, last week it was a 49 and a half yard pass to Tejon Glardy Den. Darty Glenn, excuse me, that set the boxers up for a touchdown right before halftime. Week before that, 45 yard pass to Paul Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, he he has the quarterback keeper. He he does that some a lot of times. It's not really successful, but. He he can he can really carry the ball when there's an opening and he can really carry his team to a first down if they need it, you know, or even more. But what I what is really good about his game at quarterback is that deep pass. And if he has a man open or if he can if there's a man of the slightest open at all, he watch out. And on the other end of that play, on the other end of that play, Jalen Elby Cundiff, excellent job creating separation without a push off for pass interference. So it's 15 14 boxers with three and a half to go in the second quarter. Brendan Ward, Ward on the return to the 42 yard line. And now it's Marshfield trying to answer before halftime. Head coach Lou Silva's final season at the helm of the Rams. And this is where you're a Brockton coach. You gotta say, hey, I know we're out. I know we're out of the playoffs and we're in this loser's bracket, but come on. De defense, step up. You know, finish the season strong. The defense has been <laughs> the bread and butter of the boxers all year. Hit Kelsey up the middle. Uh, Kilty, excuse me, for the Rams. He has a gain of about Just six. It's like your offense has gave you a lead. A one-point edge. Come on. Let, we're going to get the ball half after halftime. Finney's pass. Oh, what a hit. Perfectly timed. Jackson Finney's Ward. Ward on the reception, the hit by number 22 of the boxers, David Belsius. Third and three for the Rams. Brockton showing blitz. Finney on the quarterback keeper right up the middle. He's going to be taken down be short sure. of the first down. Depends on the spot, but it'll be about a yard shy. Now, they decide to go for it. And if they if they don't make it, you still have some time. To Brockton time. has plenty of time to march half the field. Yeah. And then you get the ball at, at around after the half 50. time. 
Brockton calling a timeout. They're going to bring out the measurement. Well, they're well short. There's no question of that. Well, I, from here, you can out. definitely see that they're really short. About a foot or two short. They're going to bring they're gonna out. bring out the sticks. They are, they're well short. They're at least half a yard, if not yeah. a little bit more than that. Going to be fourth and inches, maybe. Fourth and a foot. Oh, yeah. And you can see it there. They're... Yep. Prep it short. About a yard shy. So it'll be fourth and short for the Rams. One would imagine it's going to be either Finney or McNeil right up the gut. Maybe give it to the big man Kilty. 2.25 to go. Mansfield, uh, Marshfield, excuse me. A fourth and one. I always get the two confused. Every man on the line. Brockton's defense hoping to come up big, and they jump. Free play for the Rams. Now whistles blow. It'll be interesting. Free set of downs right there. That's, that is just not good by your defense right there. It's going to be offsides first against Brockton. Free first down for the Rams. You know... Those are the things that your defense is just coughing up, and it's costly. It's costly in a game like th like this. Costly in any game where you have four foot inches and you jump. Finney back to pass, looking for number seven. Pass it falls incomplete. Braden Killens, the intended receiver. Second and ten for the Rams from the 38-yard line. But Excuse me, the 42. Marshall had a good uh, hard count there. To dry up Brockton offsides. Finney back to pass. Stepping up. Now tossing it. It's going to fall incomplete. Intended for Brendan Ward. Quarterback's blind side was about to get decked. Good thing he threw that ball when he had the chance. Open, ugly. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. 15 14 boxers on top. Four receivers set. Full Hail Mary mode for the Rams. Finney back to pass, looking long towards the far sideline. And broken up by Darty Glenn on the far side. And so it is a fourth and ten. Marshfield lining up the punt with 154 to go in the second quarter. Brockton not sending anyone back to return this punt. Now they're gonna shift. Expecting a short punt, or so it would seem. And this one's going to beeline for out of bounds down near the 10. I uh, had a little Marshfield bounce on it. First and 10 boxers. We've seen them in this position so far. Don't expect them to just take a few knees and go to the half. The thing I didn't like about last week's game was playing for overtime. If I was the coach, if I was Colombo, I would have I would have tried played, tried played my cards and tried to go for the win. Well, there's a multi-dimensional aspect to this. I didn't I didn't like my I didn't like our chances in overtime from the beginning, even before we they Marsh I mean not Marshfield Needham won on um, their turn. I didn't like it. It was a multi-dimensional aspect to that loss last week against Needham. We were talking with the Brockton coaches before the game. 
And they, sh they pulled us into the locker room during practice earlier this week, and they said, listen, you take a look at this play and tell us what's wrong. It was Needham's second touchdown. That really long bomb that was like a 65-yard play. Five men on the line. Five men on the So they threw the flag, ended up picking up the flag after the play in a conference of officials. Yeah, and they said there's no... No, no foul on the play. I remember no, that. No penalty. It should have been a legal formation. That was what yeah. the original call was going to be. So they pick up the flag, give Needham the touchdown. Ends up winning the game for him because they don't score that touchdown. You never know what could happen. But yeah, Brockton could have had the uh, twenty to four. It could have been the other way. Twenty to fourteen, and then Brockton scored the. Uh, the tying touchdown and the extra point was no good yeah you could have they could have been up 21 20 and it, if that if you made that field goal you you would have been versing Zavarian tonight what a prize yeah but yeah we would have been at the Hawk Bowl right we would have been at the Hawk Bowl. Needham now hosting. And here's a bomb. He's got a man. It's Ellerby Cundiff. His second long reception of the game. To the 10. The 5. The end zone. Touchdown boxers with 6.9 seconds on the clock. Well, what I tell you, what about I tell you about Montero? Perfect. He's right at the bomb. Ellerby Cundiff's second 50 plus yard touchdown reception of the game with 6.9 seconds to go in the second quarter. And Brockton is up 23 to 14. Why couldn't this have been last week? <laughs> but I'll say that all night long. Montero Jr. The long ball. The long ball works for him every time. Not, not all every time, but you know what I mean. Now it's Tobo to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 24-14, 10 point edge for the boxers. Under 10 seconds to go, it is Jalen Ellerby Cundiff with his second 50 plus yard touchdown catch Have a game. of the night. Have a game, Mr. Cundiff. He's added a few other receptions in there as well. He's got to be nearing 150 on the night. Thanks a lot. Can we ever play fantasy, high school fantasy? Man, if you had no. Cundiff. There's been, there's been talk about implementing something for college, but there's just too much motion. <laughs> there's way too many factors involved. Right. And of course, right. to use their name and likeness, Yahoo and Aspen and all these other CBS sports, they're all paying these rights fees to the league and the Players Association. You get into high school and college, there's way too many people to be doing that with. And this uh, return is botched. His time is going to expire, and Marshfield's got a good return. One man to beat for the Rams, and it's McNeil all the way down to the 10, the 5, and the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Rams. A roller coaster first half in number 25, Brendan Ward bringing it all the way in for Marshfield. Well, what happened there with the special teams for Brockton? Weren't so special. No. No flags thrown, so it's... So a 10-point lead goes out the door. A very long return for Brendan Ward and the Marshfield Rams. And if they convert a two-point conversion here, it's a tie ball game at halftime. They will indeed attempt two points here. Up, down, over, and out the last few minutes here. That's when you thought Brockton was gonna break away at halftime and then have the ball. Here comes Marshfield.
need a mattress or know somebody who does, please stop by the student dining on Sunday between 10 and 5. So Marshfield to attempt a two-point conversion here. Roller coaster, the last few minutes here. In the first half, as Marshfield is two yards shy of drawing this one even. Ball snap, Finney to pass, and he's got his man, and it's complete. And a tie ball game, it's halftime. Unbelievable. Ties us up going into halftime. So, let's recap. It's 22 to 22. Two 50 plus yard touchdown receptions for Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Marshfield answering. Marshfield scored the first touchdown in this game. It was 8 0 at one point. Missing the next two point conversion. 14 to 8 as uh, Brockton converted theirs. And a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, this game started off real slow. And, but man, it has picked up big time right before halftime. And uh, yeah, there's been some crazy plays. There's, you know, defense hasn't come up like they should, but you know, it, this is this is an exhibition game, so defenses are going to allow things to get by. Um, you're going you're gonna to allow, be allowed to throw the bomb and find a guy downfield. I mean, last week you, almost, you wish that could have happened, but, you know, that, that was a game that mattered. This game doesn't matter, so, but both teams uh, getting their offense and doing some work. Well, it's 22-22 at halftime. Giddy up because the shootout in the second half continues coming up right after this. Green hat. Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt, blue shirt, <laughs> yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> yellow pants, red pants, green pants, <gasps> oops. <laughs> morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. You got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 no. in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. 
because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Marshfield High School, where tonight the Brockton Boxers come to town to face the Marshfield Rams. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I'm joined alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, the one, the only, Alex Wish. Welcome to the Wild Wild West, folks. It's been a shootout here thus far, 22-22 to 22 coming into the second half, and Brockton has... In order, a 55-yard touchdown pass and a 75-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Ellery Cundiff both times. Well, let's see if they continue with that deep threat. And on the other end of the field, Brendan Ward, 75-yard touchdown off of the ensuing kickoff with seven seconds left in the first half. To tie things up, a converted two-point conversion for Casey Finney. We're all knotted up. I formation, Montero Jr. under center. Sonny Oak and Lola, the man in motion. The give to Pierre right up the middle. It's been successful so yeah, far tonight. He's got a gain of about three. Brings it out to the 40-yard line. So it's 22-22. Brockton winning the coin toss, electing to defer. So they have the ball to start this second half. Same formation, Glenn Darty, the only receiver. The pitch out to Rosen Pierre, who has spun down another gain of about three. Almost had that ball stripped. Uh, barely hold on there. On the top, Casey Finney on the tackle. Clock running, third and four for the boxers. Balls out, Montero Jr. picks it up and scrambles with it and he's got a first down at the 49 yard line. Picks up the fumble. Ball will be spotted right on the 50 yard line. First down for Brockton. Jenner spot ball at the 50. Brockton huddling for maybe about the fourth time all game. Ontario Jr. back to pass. And he's got his man. It's Isaiah Laguerre on the far side. And he's got a gain of about nine. Tijon Glenn on the reception for Brockton. Second and three for the boxers. Give to Pierre, who's got another first down. Still chugging all the way down to the 32-yard line. He's Rosen Pierre. Formation for the boxers. Cumberlander and Rosen Pierre, and they give to, I believe that's Ed Ferreira. Ed Ferreira. And he has 
Yeah, a short game, maybe about three yards. It'll be second and seven. formation and Montero Jr. is going to hold on to it looking over the middle and he's going to be incomplete. Late flag, flag thrown in. Late flag after the play. After that ball was way incomplete. So you imagine some is going to be pass interference against the Rams so Brockton picks up a free first there. Seven oh four to go. It's going to be a first down for the boxers. Ball spotted at the fourteen yard line. Brockton taking their time with. This one. Give to Pierre, and he is knocked down immediately. It'll be a loss of about a yard. Glenn Darty, a lone wide out to the near side. Cumberlander and Pierre in the backfield. Quarterback keeper Montero Jr. escapes a tackle, flag thrown. Montero Jr. getting to about the 11 yard line and he's tossed out of bounds. And another flag and another late hit for the Rams. So both of these, or these might be offset rather. It might be holding against the boxers and then a personal foul for unnecessary roughness and a late hit out of play. Be interesting to see what the officials call here. They do not equate to the same yardage. Montero Jr. hit well out of bounds. So it's holding against Brockton. Late hit out of bounds against Marshfield. So I think when all is said and First done, the ball the will move north five Late yards from where it was. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Brockton winds up with an automatic first down. It'll be first and goal from the eight-yard line in one of the more confusing plays we've seen tonight. Oh, it's going to be first and ten at the 11-yard line. High formation. Montero Jr. gives off to Rosen Pierre right up the gut. And he powers through for a gain of about three. Marshfield calling a full timeout here, second and five from the six yard line. Get a welcome to the senior night. 
5.49 to go in the third quarter, still all knotted up, but Brockton threatening, second and five from the six yard line. change here, the I formation for the greater majority of the second quarter up until this point. Pitch out to Rosenpierre, trying to get to the far sideline, he does, and he's brought out of bounds about a yard shy of the first down, it'll be third and about a yard. Pierre to the other side. It's going to be third and about four. Pitch-out pass is incomplete and intended for Tejon Glenn. And it'll be fourth and four, and Brogdon looks like they're going to go for it. Hey, why not? Why not is well, why right. Not? Down in Marshfield territory. Got nothing to lose for this game, so every fourth down, if you're close or if you're in Marshfield or territory, you're gonna go for it. Procton's gonna burn a timeout here with 540 to go. So again, busy weekend for BCA Sports at the same time this game is going on down in Marshfield Friday night. We have a crew down in, or up in Franklin, I should say, up in Franklin for the Brockton Lady Boxers first round over. matchup. Up and over for that one. Aaron Tebow bringing you the sights and sounds of the Lady Boxers first round matchup against the Franklin Panthers. Tomorrow night we'll be at home in a familiar setting, thank the Lord. As the Brockton top ranked in the state and number one seed in the south section, Brockton men's soccer team faces off against these very same Marshfield Rams. If the girls are victorious tonight in Franklin, they travel to Hingham on Sunday night. Should that happen, we'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. And if the boys win on Saturday against Marshfield, they will play Monday against either Natick or King Philip at Marciano Stadium. We'll have that one for you on Brockton Community Access. The pass is going to be complete, and it's another touchdown for the boxers. Thought it fell incomplete. You know who got that? Looked like it was deflected a little bit by a Marshfield defender, but Brockton got the touchdown. Waiting word on who got that touchdown. Tobo to attempt the extra point. It is up, and it's good. Brockton, 29-22, to seven-point edge for the boxers that Number 88 on the touchdown for Brockton. That is Isaiah Laguerre. Finally a field goal, huh? Extra point. It's been a long time coming. Tobo 
Just the one opportunity in this one. Up until this point, I should say, he's got two extra points on the night. The three, that was his third extra point on the night. Brockton went for a two-point conversion on their first touchdown drive. Five and a half to go here in the third quarter. Brockton up by a touchdown, 29 to 22 the score. Spiraling kick fielded cleanly at the 20. Shooting up field is number 14, and he's going to be brought down. A late flag thrown in. We'll await the call here. Came from the boxer's end of the field. A block below the waist against Marshfield. That's a 15 yarder. Marshfield taking over the ball given to McNeil. Game getting a little bit chippy in the secondary. Eddie Kilty on the carry for the Rams. Under five minutes to go here in this first game of the loser's bracket. Third down. Boxers eliminated last week against Needham. The winner of that game having the honor and privilege to play against Severian as this pass falls incomplete in the middle of the field. The Needham-Severian game is kicked off. And a fourth and one, a fourth and goal rather, from the one, Needham stuffed Severian at the line. That game still scoreless at this point. As far as you know. As far as Twitter says. It's too bad you Twitter don't wouldn't lie. have the uh, data and the, how the pros you know how the NFL and everything. Now this punt bullet straight out of bounds. And it's, it's like up to date, you know, right up to the minute. Too bad high school sports isn't like that where you can check the scores all around and it's all up to the minute. This just in. End of the first quarter, Needham is trailing Severian seven to nothing. Well, that would be a huge upset if Needham pulled out a win. Well, every year, it's, every year it is three Catholic conference teams and one poor public school. Yeah. In the state semi or in the semifinals of the sectional. And every year it seems to be Severian and BC High, Severian Catholic Memorial. This one falls incomplete. And intended for Sunny Oak and Lola. Well, Needham is the number two seed in the South Sectional bracket. The only one ranked above them is BC High. Brockton was ranked seventh in that bracket. And so it's the Rockets hosting the Hawks. Where was Severian ranked in that? Severian was the Third seed followed by Catholic Memorial. Wellesley was somewhere up there. Really? Because I would think BC Hines, if Harry would be wanting to, not need him. So it all goes, 
the first determining factor in that is win percentage. BC High undefeated, 7-0. and Needham went 5-2. and two. Severian went 4-3. and three. Hmm. Newton North was the fourth seed. They also went four and three. CM behind them is Rosen Pierre almost all the way, and he's going to be stopped shy. It'll be a first and goal from the four yard line for Brockton. Attlebo, Brockton, and Taunton all finishing three and four, but winning their divisions to get into the tournament. Taunton making the jump this year back up to D1 after hanging out in Division Two for better part of the last decade. That's well, first and goal from the four yard line. Montero Jr. under center. Ellery Cundiff, the man in motion, he's gonna get the look here and it's going to be picked off. Uh, Marshfield with an interception and off to the races is number 25, Brandon Ward. Ward to the 30, the 20. Ellery Cundiff catching up with him at the 15 yard line and it's a touchdown saving tackle for the wide receiver who is intended to catch a touchdown for the boxers all the way in the other end of the field. Brendan Ward taking it from one end zone all the way up to the 15 yard line of Brockton and you talk about a game changer right there. Marshfield trailing by a touchdown with three minutes left in the third quarter. No better posi position to start than right here. Oh Montero what had it under through that ball pretty well and came up a little short for Cundiff. And that's why Marshall was able to intercept that ball, bring it all the way downfield. And now the tables have turned. It's Ellery Cundiff who's end to end they go. Limping. Jalen Ellery Cundiff limping, favoring his right leg. Walter Jr. Walking alongside, helping his senior wide receiver, co-captain. And then they go at Marshall High. Up and down the turf they go. High formation for the Rams now. The give to Keeley who gets crushed but stays on his feet. He's got a gain of about five. Severian has gone up 14 to nothing, a 70 yard run for the Hawks with 645 left in the second quarter. In other news that pertains to Brockton, The Bridgewater Random Trojans are facing off against the Natick Red Hawks. BR's stingy defense has forced three, three and outs for the Red Hawks as a first down. Getting towards the end zone and a touchdown for the Rams. It's the quarterback Jackson Finney on the keeper. And we're an extra point away from a tie ball game. Bridgewater Random is winning that game 14-0 in the Division II semifinals. Uh, Marshfield debating what they're going to do with this one. 2.09 to go in the third quarter. Brockton's going to use 
one of their timeouts here. So 2.09 to go. Marshfield an extra point away from Ty this one. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight. Brockton on top for the moment. Marshfield sure looks like they're going to attempt a two-point conversion. There is a kicker listed. Two kickers rather listed on this Marshfield roster. Two-point conversion is good. Casey Finney on the end around give. And it's 30 to 29. Marshfield on top. 2.09 to go in the third quarter. Martin will have the ball back an opportunity to answer. All the players tonight for Mansfield, uh, Marshfield, excuse me, have been the quarterback Jackson Finney, Jack McNeil, Brendan Ward, who just had that 75 yard, rather 85 yard interception return, and Kilty, the running back, Dan Hickey, has been held mostly quiet after a few catches early in this one. And it is Hickey that is the place kicker who has not had an opportunity to kick an extra point yet tonight. Not the game you thought it was going to be, you know, two minutes left in the first half. Definitely not. Brockton having a 10 point lead. Well, the squib is boxed, and Marshfield has it. It starts still out. And now Marshfield has it. Wow. Big mistake. Big mistake by there, there by Brockton. Now Marshfield starts pretty much at the same spot they started last drive. Maybe a little bit back, a little bit more field to play with, but. Lowest box from the very start, the squib kick. It was Isaiah Laguerre who was attempting to pick it up. Backpedaling, and there was a boxer receiver, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, that was running forward trying to pick that one up. Miscommunication, the two players collided and Marshfield was able to pounce this high pass complete and immediately hit out of bounds. It's a 10 yard reception to Danny Hickey. Check that, Casey Finney. Casey Finney on the reception for the Rams who are now trying to take Full possession lead, trying to draw this one seven points at least. Give to McNeil who makes a cut. Casey Finney on the handoff. It's a gain of about four yards, second and goal. First and goal for the Rams. Getting across the first down marker. First and goal from the nine for the Rams. Jackson Finney, quarterback keeper, and he is crushed Jackson Finney to the at keeper. the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from eight and a half. Casey Finney all the way through. And he's going to be shy. He's going to the goal line. Any 
Ukilti on the carry, bringing the Rams within a yard. Jackson Finney under center. Quick give and Kilty's in for the Rams. Touchdown, 37 seconds left in the third quarter. It is 36-29. Seven point edge at the moment for the Rams. Trade some haymakers in this one. Yeah, and just think that Brockton was up by 10 in this game. Now, now look at them. It could be facing an eight or nine point uh, deficit. Just not the game you thought back, way back when in the second quarter. But this is an exhibition game for you. Marshfield. High scoring, back to back. Marshfield's going to talk some strategy here. If they attempt and convert a two point conversion, it's a two possession game. As the lead would then be nine. If they miss on this two point conversion, it makes it a lot more interesting. A seven point ball game. Brockton could potentially take a lead. They're going to attempt their first extra point of the game and the weird formation shift that we sometimes see. Watch out for the fake hair. Flag thrown and I think we might have illegal formation. Illegal substitution against the Rams. That'll back them up five. Still going with an extra point attempt. It's about a 20 yard attempt. Hickey the place kicker. And it's going to be good. Eight point ball game. It's 37 to 29. Rams on top. Brockton now must score a touchdown and a two point conversion to draw this one even. 37 seconds remain in the third quarter. Brockton to receive the extra point. Ellery Cundiff, Frozen Pierre. Two boxers back deep. Along with Paul Mitchell. Low squib kick. Same thing that happened last time happens this time, but it's taken by Mitchell. And he's brought down at the 32 yard line. Mansfield trying to exploit that opening. Ted Tessa caused the last Broxers fumble on the kickoff and almost doing the same thing again there. formation, lone wide out to the far side. Quarterback keeper for Montero Jr. who's spun down a loss of about five. Tim Atkinson on the stop. Last of four on the play. Let's go defense! 
Time's going to expire on the third quarter. 37 to 29 the score. The Marshfield Rams leading the Brockton Boxers by eight points. On senior night here in Marshfield. Side note, completely meaningless game. As both these teams eliminated from postseason contention in their respective games last week. We want to take this opportunity to thank our cameramen for tonight's festivities. Up in the rain. On top of the press box here is Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Of course, you're listening to the Sultry Sounds three-man tag team tonight. Kevin Caro, the athletic director of Brockton High. He joined us a little bit earlier. Alex Wish and myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Bringing you all the action from a nice warm, dry press box. Oh yeah. I'll tell you this, I'd much rather be up on top of the press box because it is a better view. It's a better view, but it is scattered showers tonight. We've seen a few of them oh, here. Oh, come on. Got some sensitive equipment here. Oh, come on. You've dealt with a little get rain a, before. I got a wireless mic if you still want to go up. You've dealt with a little rain before. An unsuccessful Brockton carry brings up a third and about 15. And an injured boxer. Not a good sign. The entire Marshfield team immediately calling for the trainer. As the boxer down is just There's starting to wiggle around. Stop by student dining, that back left corner of the high school. 10 to 3. Pick up those mattresses. 30 Trying to see a number on the boxer. Can't beat the deals that are going on. And it's a great way to help out our music programs here at Marshfield High School and support our students. This boxer down stoppage. 17 seconds into the fourth quarter with Brockton trailing by eight. It's the left leg being worked on. And the right ankle, rather, of the injured boxer. Both teams going to take a water break here. That's something you never want to see, especially in a meaningless action. game. Bridgewater Raynham is up 21 to 7 over Natick. As you can hear Bridgewater Raynham up 21 to 7 over the Natick Red Hawks. In the Duxbury Division II South Sectional Finals, uh, semifinals rather. Severian leading the Needham Rockets by a couple of touchdowns. <laughs> 21 nothing the score in that one. Old Rochester has a 6 nothing lead over Rockland. Milton is leading Silver Lake. Matthew Goldstone, the injured boxer. Stephen Vo, the our soccer program junior will be lineman. Boys soccer will be playing at six o'clock at Marciano State in, in Brockton, and our girls will be playing at seven o'clock in Mansfield. Please come out and support both of our programs tomorrow night. Now pass complete, and depending on the Ooh. spot, close to the first down. Took a little tumble at the end. Ellerby Cundiff on the reception. Ellerby Cundiff on the reception. Nice reception. That puts oh. him at about buck 75 on the night with two touchdowns. Oh, he's spotted just outside the 40 yard line. It'll be a fourth and fourth about down. three yards, just shy of three yards. That wasn't a first down. Looked like a first down. It's 
Fourth and about three yards. Three. Mm. Wow. I thought that reception was a little bit longer than what it ended up to be. Brockton going for it here. The end around give to Ellerby Cundiff. He now has a first down and more. All the way to the 40. Cutting back inside. Now back across. Looking to get back to the middle of the field. Brought down at the 38-yard line. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. No doubt about that one. Yep. No doubt about that one is right. And uh, that puts him close to 200 yards tonight. He'll, he'll, he'll get 200 yards easily tonight. minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Brockton trailing by eight. Threatening here. I formation. That would be Cundiff the lone wide out to the far side. Marshfield jumping. Free play for Brockton. Looking long. Looking deep. Oh! And he's got it! He's got it! Wow! Unbelievable. Flag down. This one's going to be declined. Offsides against the Marshfield Rams, it'll be first and goal for the Boxers. What an unbelievable effort. That, that was a great effort to make that catch. I didn't even think he was going to come Slowly developing with that. play. Marshfield looked like the play was blown dead. Brockton capitalized on it. It's encroachment against the Rams. Declined. First and goal, Boxers. Wow. Would you look at that? That couldn't believe he got that catch. What a grab, though! What a grab! First goal for the boxers. Excellent deep ball. I've heard that tonight before. Yeah, two other times. I formation, first and goal for Brockton. And this one's in for a Brockton touchdown. For the Dexter Cumberlander, the senior co-captain, chipping in. And Brockton's within a two-point conversion from drawing this one. Where's the excitement? Brockton, touchdown! They did signal a touchdown. Uh, Some confusion the on the field. The ref has something different to say. What's going on? They, did, they put it up on the scoreboard. There is a touchdown. Brockton's going to go for two here. Come on, boys! Let's go, Rams! And now Brockton's going to call a timeout. Call that Nine thirty-two to go. Brockton going to attempt a two-point conversion here. Trying to tie this game. Plenty of time left on the clock. Three wide out set. Ellerby Cundiff in the slot. He is the man in motion. Ontario Jr. in the gun flanked by Pierre. Rolling out to pass and has to get rid of it is Montero. He's brought down for a sack. And a big stop for the Marshfield defense. What happened to the quarterback keeper? Should have done a quarterback keeper. Rolling out, he didn't find anybody. Montero shaking up on the sideline. Jose Montero Jr. in visible amounts of pain as you can see the Entire Brockton team turning its attention to their senior quarterback. Jose Montero Jr. didn't get rid of it quick enough. He was clobbered by two Rams.
looks like Montero Jr.'s hand is the injured body part. There's Tobo to kick this one off. Hopefully that's not too serious for the rest of this game. Brendan Ward on the return, Brandon, he gets return. up to the 31 yard line. So if Montero Jr. is unable to go, it'll be Thomas O'Brien in a quarterback for the boxers. We've seen him a few times this season, has had some success, especially in that BC high game against Harvard. Throwing a couple of touchdown passes late in that one. Well, that would be the, you know, if, if Montero is that hurt and he can't really continue the rest of this game, it'd be a good opportunity for him to get some reps in, see, uh, you know, how he feels, try to get some work with the offense. All for next season if he's the starter. Ooh. Well, maybe we'll see Just Michael Norman. that he's a senior. Maybe Michael Norman will come in and get some reps going into on, next season as the Thanks presumable info. <laughs> boxer quarterback. The end around give to Casey Finney is Casey Finney on the carry. He's held up game of about two. Third and short. Be third in less than a yard for the Rams. Eight and a half to go. Biggest third down of the game right here for Brockton. Flags thrown, and oh, it sounds like it's going to be back. false start against start the, Rams. the Rams. It is. That'll big. back them up five, so it'll be third and about six. That's big. Third and six for the Rams. Jackson Finney back to pass under pressure. Hit as he throws and it's incomplete. Intended for Casey Finney. And that'll bring up a fourth and six. Uh, Marshfield lining up to punt. Ellerby Cundiff and Paul Mitchell, the two boxers, back to receive this punt. High end over ender. And Mitchell's not even going to attempt it. It rolls out of bounds at around the 25 yard line. Do the smart. Don't touch it. Don't. We've already seen the botch kickoff that led to yep. the last Marshfield touchdown. Well, that one was just right on the sideline anyway, so there's no reason of trying to go for that and trying to return it. Better off just starting at the, around the 20. I think I saw Jose Montero Jr. back in for the boxers. Montero Jr. under center. Give to Pierre and Pierre turning on the Jets, bowling over a few Rams. Well, and has a gain of about eight. Montero's back in the game, but I would think. I mean, you're thinking a meaningless game. You bring in next year starting yeah, quarterback right. Michael Norman but to I get would, some reps. I would think that Montero is not really going to be doing that much. You know, doesn't want to 
injure that hand any more than he already has tonight. So, probably doing a lot of run plays like he's doing right now. This give is a first down run to Rosenpierre. Not a lot, of, you won't see a lot of quarterback keepers. But which hand is it? Is it that's the throwing question. hand? That's the question. Or is it... Of course, when one is right. holding their hand, like in pain, you never exactly know which hand it is. Yeah. So... Especially it, as he's bobbing and weaving through the boxer's sideline. If side it's his throwing hand, uh, that deep ball threat might, uh, might be in question. The pitch out... Right now, he's been doing all running plays and a pitch out there. Ted Ferrer on the first down run for the boxers. Three straight runs for the boxers. 6.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Brockton trailing by two. Max Tobo does have a good leg on him. Pitch out to Ferrer. Ferrer on the far side trying to turn the corner. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage, but a flag thrown in after the play. And a block below the belt against Brockton will back them up. Fifteen yard penalty against the boxers. So it'll be first in twenty five for Brockton. Most definitely throwing down here. Montero Jr. in the gun, four receiver set. Kellerby Cundiff on the end around give. And he's got nowhere to go. Montero Jr. throws a block and Kellerby Cundiff taken down. Flags thrown in from every direction. It's gotta be against Marshfield here. It's gotta be something about jumping on the back or a, around the neck grab or something. Face mask against Brockton is the call. Block in the back against Brockton. That'll back him up further. Flags thrown from every direction on that play. One would think it was against the jumping Ram who brought down Ellerby Cundiff. But it's an illegal block in the back against Brockton. So it's First and about half of the field to go. But you can see Montero. I would, you know, if his hand was okay, he would he would have thrown that. He tried to throw the ball, but he did another pitch to kind of. It's a first and 39 and really for the boxers. Anywhere. Montero Jr. back to pass, looking long. It's a perfect spiral. He's got the catch. He got it. Wow. It's Tejon Darty Glenn. Back past the original line of scrimmage. All the way across the 50 to the 47 yard line of the Rams. Well, his hand is not hurt that bad. If he can throw, launch it downfield about 40, 50 yards. Third and four. More so like 30, be, you know. It'll be third and four after a second and 39. So it's a 35-yard catch for Tijon Darty Glenn. Montero Jr. under center. This pitch out to Ed Ferreira. Ferreira's got the first down before he's pushed out of bounds. Well, the deep threat is still alive for the Brockton Boxers. And that's good news. That is good news to see after doing all those running plays and pitch plays. You know, I was really worried for a second that Montero couldn't really throw the ball again. But you saw that, that launch right there. So that's great news that he still can launch the ball in this game. Not only just a deep ball, but a perfect spiral. Yeah. 
Darty Glenn the lone wide out to the near side. The give to Dexter Cumberlander. Cumberland on, on third and half a yard. And he didn't get the first down last play. I find that hard to believe. He definitely got it. It was a bad spot. And I think he's got it on this one for sure. I don't believe that. We're going to call for a measurement here oh, with 3.59 to go. Brockton down by two, threatening here. The play of the drive is a 35-yard catch and run for Tejon Darty Glenn from a banged up Jose Montero Jr. You got to give him the first down. Should have had the first down two plays ago. Gonna be short by the look of it. It's gonna be fourth and about three centimeters. They're gonna measure it on the hash mark just to be sure. Oh, come on. That's gotta be one chain link. They're gonna move it. That, to the that hash mark is, just to be sure. That is just a bad, bad spot. That is not good on the refs. That, that should have been already a first down. This is huge for Marshfield, but you know, if I was Brockton on that sideline, I'd be screaming. It is fourth and two and a half centimeters. Uh, that's outrageous that it's fourth down. Should have first down, no problem. Every man on the line and Dexter Cumberlander, Rosen Pierre, the two backs behind Jose Montero Jr. who's under center. Quarterback keeper, no question about this one. Montero Jr. is across the line. Way He's over got a line. first down. Jose Montero Jr., quarterback keeper. Refs don't give him the first down there. I'm walking out of this booth. That is a first down for the boxers. 3.53 to go. Brockton, fresh set of downs on Marshfield's end of the field. First and 10 from the 42 yard line. Darty Glenn, the lone wide out to the far side. Montero Jr. under center again. High formation for the boxers. They give to Rosen Pierre. Pierre right up the gut. He's got a gain of about five. It's Ed Ferrer on the carry, rather, for Brockton. Second and a long four, we'll call it five for Brockton. You know, within striking distance at the Marshfield 37 yard line. 255 and counting, left in the fourth. Montero Jr. under center. The give to Ferrer and he's cut down immediately, rather it was Dexter Cumberlander. Jake Devonshire on the stop. Jake Devonshire on the stop for the Rams. Third down. Big third down for the Boxers offense here. Probably a little bit too long to attempt a field goal for Max Tobo. It is third and about five with 215. In the fourth quarter, Brockton down by two, so you just have to draw within field goal range. What that is, we don't know. The only thing we've seen Tobo ball year is a 15 yarder. Timeout. And Marshfield's going to call a timeout. So Tobo has attempted a 15 yarder as well as numerous extra points. Well, Two minutes left, you still have some time to try to drive down to get a touchdown. 
but, you know, take a risk. Offense could mess up or could have a couple bad calls. Well, I'm looking for that deep threat again. It's been working, so try not a deep threat. Tobo does have one field goal on the year, 14 extra points. Yeah, they got to they gotta convert the here, though. They got to convert for a first down before you talk about field goals. Oh, it's third and a long four. The give to Dexter Cumberlander, who is going to be close to the first down marker. He might be just shy. So, this is what I'm saying. It's fourth down now. You got to convert. You got to convert if you're going to talk about... Max Pobo coming in here for field goal. Let's go, we get a new, fresh new set of downs. Let's go, Clock is ticking. 120 left to go in the fourth quarter. This is quarter. the game right here. This is the game. Montero Jr. under center. He's back to pass. Watch out. And it's going to fall in complete turnover on downs. Marshfield's going to take over and take a couple of knees and get the victory. Yeah. The question is, why do you pass it when you've got every man on the line and one lone wide out? The play fooled nobody, especially the Marshfield Rams defense. The pass... A little bit overthrown on the far sideline. Yeah, yeah, as I was about to say. And not not really an ideal pass either by by um not really an ideal pass there. 115 to go. Marshfield has to take two knees to end it. Brockton trying to punch the ball out. Brockton's probably going to take a touch timeout here. Timeout on the field by Kilty up the middle. Brockton does indeed burn a timeout. 109 to go. We want to take this opportunity to once again thank our cameraman for tonight's festivities. The one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. All game long, you've been listening to the sultry sounds of the Brockton Athletic Director, Kevin Cairo, Wishbone himself, Alex Wish, and myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. Well, next week, we don't know when we'll play, where we'll, well, we know it'll be a home game, or who will play. Check on our Twitter feed and the MIAA's website to see that one. Jet run for Casey Finney, and he's held up at the line of scrimmage. Brockton going to burn another timeout. 59.2 to go. Brockton hoping for a prayer here. If the defense can come up big here on third down, they might have an opportunity to strike. Marshfield gets a first down. This thing's over. Brockton's defense, as has been the case most of the year, has to come up big. Third and six and a half for the Rams. Finney, the pitch out. Getting the first down is a guilty, and that'll just about end it. Brockton stopping the clock once again. Thank you, our football team managers, Rose, Catherine, and Sabrina, for the hard work all team as well. And so. 
And what is the last home game of this season for the Marshfield Rams? And the last of head coach Lou Silva's 37 years at the helm of Marshfield. The Rams will get a victory against the Brockton Boxers. Some play after the whistle, pushing and shoving. Brockton calling for a flag. No need for that with 12 seconds to go. Cooler heads prevail. I don't think we're going to see a flag here. And they're going to say roll the clock. And this one's going to come to an end. A two-point victory for the Marshfield Rams. The final score is 37 to 35. Brockton falling in their first matchup of the Bridesmaids bracket. They will be at home next week against two. We don't know. But they will be at Marciano Stadium before the final matchup of this year, the Cape Cod Bowl on Thanksgiving. That game is at Bridgewater Random High School. We'll be there for Brockton Community Access. Alex. It started out sloppy, turned into an old-fashioned Wild West shootout. From there, the sloppiness continued. Yeah, definitely a sloppiness. Um, both sides of the football, once again. Um, you know, when you need to come up big, Montero didn't come up big. He was coming up big all game, but couldn't come up big on a fourth down a fourth down, a little overthrown pass. So, you know, if he got that first down, we we would have we would have been saying something different here, maybe. We would have been saying that, that the boxers won. You know? Well as we learned last week, it all comes down to a couple plays. Can't blame the refs in this one. You can't blame the Marshfield Rams. When push comes to shove, the boxers didn't show up on the big plays. Yeah, they had the big plays, but the big plays were at, at the wrong times, not when it what mattered the most. It was either to tie it up or, you know, to take a, a lead, but you know, it was early in the game. But, you know, you gotta come up clutch in the fourth quarter when it is needed the most. Well, the probably most shocking and the one that really changed the direction of this game with six seconds left in the first half, a kickoff return for a touchdown by Brendan Ward and that tied it up at 22 going into the half. Special team stop, we're talking about a different ball game here. I have to say what really killed the Brockton Boxers the most was when Marshfield got a touchdown, then they kicked off, and Brockton botched it. And then they got the, the ball back. The special teams is the one that decided this one. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Marshfield capitalized on it. On it. They won up by nine. And that made it that much, that much harder for Brockton to try and come back. And, you know, if, if they didn't botch that, you wouldn't – be losing by two right now. It wouldn't be you wouldn't have lost by two if you botched that. All the final